the clock struck ten, and I find myself standing alone in the shabby train station, still catching my breath. How could I have missed the train? I don't even remember. All I know now is my feet are sore and my throat is dry. I ran to catch the train and still missed it. I have to get out of this crazy town as soon as possible, before I lose my mind. In the corner of my eyesight, I can see half a dozen people walking out of the station slowly into the cold night, while mumbling in a language I still fail to recognise. The flickering blue lights of the station give up after buzzing periodically, letting the dim orange glow of the timetable display illuminate the waiting room. In the corner of my eyesight, I see a face in the dark behind the ticket counter. The old woman just grins at her computer, completely drenched. Water rolls down her chin and neck, the rainwater splattering on her from the open window. Right next to her doesn't seem to bother her. I could shrug it off or chalk it up to it as a normal shitty day at work in this town, in the middle of nowhere. But I have seen one too many things to ignore today. I still try to focus on the slowly updating train timetable. At this point, I don't even care about getting on the train to my place. I just want to get out of this place before the storm worsens. Or worse, my train of thoughts gets cut off when the lady starts to click her teeth. One of the lights above comes back up and gets back at what it is good at, flickering. My mind might be playing games with me, but I swear the flickering of the light matched the clicking. The corner she is sitting in gets dimmer. The street lights before the station shuts off one by one. Feeling the hair behind my neck stand up with the cold breeze, my instinct takes over my foot and forces me to walk away from the counter. Directly below the only functioning, barely functioning light source in the corner of the waiting room. The pungent smell which lingered becomes stronger as I seek safety under the patch of illumination. My eyes wander around looking for something to calm me down. My breathing slows down as I smile at the updated timetable. The next train out of here will be in two minutes. Just two more minutes. I mumble and grip my backpack. My smile disappears when I see that 10 Zero three p.m. Seen on the first row of the screen disappear. The noise of rain hitting the concrete platform gets more intense as I stare at the timetable. That is probably a glitch. A train will arrive in two minutes. It can't be cancelled, can it? I ask myself and rub my temples. Even in the middle of the heavy downpour, I hear the silent lady's teeth click loudly. Cancelled appears in bold red letters right next to the name of the train. I sigh and mumble. <sighs> Fine, I can still get on the next. The clicking noises echoes again in the empty, damp room as the arrival and departure times of the next train vanish off the screen, making space to show the C word, the eight-letter C word. The lady behind the counter clicks her teeth again, and again, one by one, the trains get cancelled. Could you stop it? I yell loudly at the top of my lungs, hoping it would at least make the weirdo stop smashing her teeth together. As I turn my head, I lock with her. She's no longer busy gawking at her computer. She's no longer breathing out of her mouth. How long has she been looking at me? We just stared at each other for what felt like an eternity. I don't want to take my eye off her. But I can't just let her peer into my soul forever. I collect all of my strength I have in me to ask what is going on with the trains. But I find myself helpless and hesitant. Wait. When was the last time I saw her blink? I painfully gulp and look at the exit for a moment. Luckily, there is no one or no thing blocking my way. I slowly walk towards the door, keeping an eye on my company. The lady's piercing eyes follow me. Her lips quiver before she mouths three words. It is time.
Against the rain and coldness, sweat begins to form on my forehead. Taking one step out of the waiting room, I check out the timetable. Deep down in my heart, I hope that all the trains getting cancelled minutes before arriving here was some kind of server error or some other error. I start running out of the station and taking a moment to let what I saw sink in. I keep running, alone. My backpack weighs as if I loaded it with bricks, pulling me down. I see no one on the streets. I don't even see a single light from any of the houses in the town centre. I have to get somewhere. Somewhere safe. I know in my heart I shouldn't be outside. I shouldn't be here. Standing in the middle of the street, I look around and gasp. My mind still struggled to comprehend what I saw on the station. Instead of the word cancelled being on each row of the timetable, it is time glowed brightly, illuminating the room with red. Out of nowhere, blinding light shines brightly before me.